Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Legacy Leadership Radio Show with Adrian Chenault and Tom Chenault. We've got a really fun show in store for you today with truly one of the smartest people I know and a conversation that I think is is really timely. And really what about our guest? What about our guest? I just yeah. What about him? Go, Tom. You're, I'm you're the smartest guy you know. But what about the guest? Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Right. You are also one of the smartest guys I know, although and the best smart guy I know at playing the fool of anyone I have ever met in my life, which is one of your superpowers. But you truly are one of the smartest people I know, Dad. So hi, Dad. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. I'm so excited to have this guy on here because I'm telling you what, I feel like I'm riding on the shoulders of giants and both of you are just doing some stuff that I never thought possible. And I'm just more pumped up than I've ever been. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So back to you. I interrupted you and I shouldn't have done that. It's your, your show. I am going to be your color man today. So let's go. This is the, this is, so you guys mark my words, watch, watch how this goes down. He knows that he's not here in the studio with me. So if you're listening on the radio, usually we're sitting next to each other in the same studio. Tom's in Phoenix today, which means that I am not able to stab him with a pen when he (laughs) doesn't do what he's supposed to do. So anything can happen today, but I, I'm super excited about this show. I'm very excited about our guest whose name is Justin Bellababa. And Justin is the founder of NowSight. And for those of you who don't get my copious and very interesting emails and have not yet heard the exciting news, Contact Mapping has just been acquired by NowSight. We have just joined forces with Justin and an amazing team and an amazing company and organization who are on a mission to help entrepreneurs and especially solopreneurs and network marketers to be able to grow their business effortlessly. And the system they have created to do that is amazing. And so we'll talk more about that. But before we do that, I want to introduce Justin and and get to know him. Justin is a Harvard and Oxford grad. He is a serial entrepreneur with three exits under his belt already. He founded NowSite six years ago. And he, he's just an amazing, thoughtful guy. He's a great dad. He's based in London, England, although he's originally from Toronto, Canada. And Justin, thanks for staying up late and being on with us. How are you today? I am I'm awesome. And I sincerely appreciate the invitation. I, uh, I've, I've been hoping to get this invitation for a while. I couldn't get your attention. So finally we thought we better buy this company. (laughs) (laughs) So it's it's all worth it though. It's all, it's it's great to be here. Dad are playing hard to get worked, man. Great job. (laughs) We got him on here now. So now we got to figure out what the heck we like him so much. So take it away, buddy. That is so good. So Justin, I, you know, I want to have you share a little bit of your background because I, I really, you know, what you have accomplished uh, in, you know, in a very short amount of time within your career is, is really inspiring to me. And I, I'd love for people to get to hear your story of, of how you came to be an entrepreneur first and, and then what led you to ultimately creating NowSite. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you know, I was, uh, it, was, it was two in the morning um, in my second year of, uh, of college. And I was, you know, I was playing pool with a friend and up until that moment, um, I thought for sure I was going to go to Wall Street and, you know, do the banking thing like everybody else. Uh, it seemed that Harvard was, was doing. And my friend just two in the morning, he said, we should start a tech company. And it was 2002 and it was kind of the first dot com boom. And that thought had not crossed my mind until that moment. And I, I swear this is true. It was like lightning. And I said, yes, we should. And I haven't looked back since. Wow. It was, it was literally that moment. Um, and, and, and what, what should like, I'm so, I, sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt you a million times, but I mean, what, what do you think happened for you in that moment that somehow this thing that hadn't really occurred to you up until that point became so evident? What did you see? I think, I think, I mean, you know, obviously it was a lot of intuition because I was going on no knowledge or facts, but it, as it, I I think as it turns out, um, 
I think something inside me knew that I was kind of well suited for this, you know, quite irrational and and crazy career path. Because um, you do have to be a little bit irrational to start tech companies, right? Like no, no totally rational person would do it because the odds of failure are so high and the odds of success are so low. So you have you have to be, I, I, you know, to me, irrationally optimistic. And I am nothing. And, you know, ask anyone that works with me day in, day, day out knows I am. That doesn't mean I'm always happy, but I am irrationally optimistic. Like there is not a problem that I am not certain that we can solve. There's not a challenge that I am not absolutely certain that we can't overcome. It's just a matter of, you know, putting in a little bit of thought. So I loved, I always love technology. I love problem solving. I love being creative and I am irrationally optimistic. And somehow in my brain, in that moment, those facts kind of came together and I, it was just, it was just so clear, not knowing anything about it. It was so clear that that was, that was the right thing for me. Um, and I've, I haven't, you know, truly, truly, I mean, I haven't worked a day since, like there hasn't been a single day that I've, you know, looked at the clock and said, Oh gosh, is it, it's only, it's only three, it's only 3 PM. Right. Like n- never the days are always over way too fast and it can't start early enough. And I can't wait to get back at it on Monday. Like that, that's, that's, that's my existence for 20 years. It's, it's, I, I love what I do. I feel privileged to be able to do it. Um, it's, it's a, it's an absolute blessing. That is so cool. And so this is, so now said is your third company or fourth company? My fourth, fourth, fourth company. Yeah. So um, very, like very, very briefly, I had um, th- my first company was um, actually before you could pay with a credit card and a taxi wirelessly. So we were, we were the first people to do that back in, you know, college, 2002, 2003. Um, and then I had a medical software company that I took public. And then I had a um, chain of like virtual wellness clinics that I sold to a private equity group in 2017. And then I started NowSite. And six years later, um, it's, it's, it's a, I mean, it's just a fantastic company. But I will say this, that is absolutely what I, what I call the Instagram version of my story. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, look, I can cherry pick those four, you know, successes and it can sound like, oh, you know, this guy's got it figured out or, he, you know, he like he, he, he knows exactly what to what he's doing all the time or whatever. You know, you can kind of conjure these ideas of, you know, constant success when I want to be clear that my reality is anything but that. Like my day-to-day reality is an unending series of failures with the very, very rare exception of things coming together. And you have this like this spike of success and then you go right back to failing all day, every day. And, And again, that is that's the life in a, you know, in a tech startup. And I think that's why you have to be a little bit irrational. In your optimism, right? Just to kind of just to kind of do that every day and just fail from morning till night every day. <laughs> you know, I the the thing that came to me as you as you shared that story and and that particular part about just this like uninterrupting uh, unending series of failures with these sort of flashes of of occasional success and brilliance interspersed is it's like golf, right? Golf, I hit like I hit however, like what I I'm lucky if I, if I can keep it less than 100 strokes. So I hit a hundred golf balls and maybe two or three of those is even like a serviceable shot. And somehow we remember the two or three enough that that keeps us. Because in in fairness, it's always the last one though, that it's a, that brings you back. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, like you'll, you'll play horrible all day, but then that, you know, there'll be just one shot that brings you back. But yes, that's a, that that's a great analogy. That's a great analogy. That's so awesome. That is so good. Uh, all right. The uh, if you so somebody just said, how do I get the comments on on the Zoom? Uh, if you 
what, so if you want your, your name to show on the screen, go to streamyard.com slash Facebook. I think that's what you're asking about. Um, so just for anybody that is watching with us live and wants to show up on the screen, we definitely want to shout you out. It's so awesome to see all the faces here. Uh, and man, we got a, we got some heavy hitters and we've got an amazing group of, of folks here watching with us. So thanks. Make sure you say hello in the comments so we can shout you out. Uh, and this is, this is what it is to, to go and build a business and, and that, uh, that sort of unflappable optimism is a huge part of what it takes to be an entrepreneur because you are, you're simultaneously having to deal with a, all of that failure and continuous failure and learning and challenges all the time. And you have to hold this vision for the future while not ignoring reality. And that's, that's the plight of the entrepreneur. And yeah. that's what it takes in order to be successful. And, you know, you've got a pretty, yeah. you know, you have an, you have an Instagram version that a lot of people would be, you know, would kill for. And one of the things that's important for all of us to understand as entrepreneurs is that you don't get the, you don't get that Instagram version if you're not willing to go through all of that failure on the way to get there. Is that right? Well, that's right. But you also, here's the, here's the other thing. You also have to get really good at failing. Like I think, and, and forgive me, I, I can't see who's out there watching, but I, I, I strongly suspect that I am better at failing than almost anybody here today. Like I have, I have mastered the art of failing. And the, the whole thing is under is, is, is basically understanding that I don't know anything, right? Like I, 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 for an idea to work, it has to be logical. It has to be a good idea. It has to be interesting, but that's not enough. Like there's this X factor called the market, right? And you cannot predict how it will react to a certain thing that you do. So the most important thing is that you don't waste a lot of time waiting for feedback, right? So the more, like the, the biggest advantage that we have it, it, as a startup is our ability to move quickly. And the, so the faster that we can learn, the faster that we can try things and fail and try and fail and learn and learn and learn, that's the key to success. That's it's just exactly. mastering the art of failure, truly. Yep. And and shortening those feedback loops so that you can move forward and you can adjust course really quickly along the way. So this is a, an awesome conversation. Uh, the world is changing really rapidly. And we're going to talk about that a little bit on the other side of the break because you have really adapted in a huge way your entire company in the last six months or so. So we're going to come back to that. we got to take a quick break. You're listening to the Legacy Leadership Show on the Genesis Communication Network with Adrian Chenault, Tom Chenault, and Justin Bellababa. Stick around. Oh my gosh, we stuck the landing. All right, we got so many awesome people oh here. Hi, Tim. Gosh. Hi, Paul. Go ahead, Dad. No, just look at Curtis Broom, Brian McMullen. Holy mackerel, we woke him up all over the world. That is exactly right. Oh yeah, there. Yeah, that's cool. That is amazing. All right, so we're coming back in ten seconds. This is a shorter segment. This one's only about six, seven minutes long. So we'll uh, let's talk AI. We're gonna come back. Hold on. And we're back. Welcome back to the Legacy Leadership Show with Adrian and Tom Chenault and guest Justin Bellababa, CEO and founder of NowSight. Before the break, we were talking about. Justin's journey of entrepreneurship and in particular, just how important it is to be able to face failure and to learn from what you're putting out there into the market and to adjust quickly. And Justin, I want to shift the conversation just a little bit because I, I would venture to say that one of the most significant uh, course changes and shifts that you have made in the history of NowSite has happened within the last six or eight months. Would you say that's true? I would say that is absolutely true. And so talk about what happened late 2022 and what you saw that caused you to, to say, we need to totally shift our, our direction and focus as a company. Yeah, look, I think that, you know, any tech company that is not seriously considering a major shift has their head in the sand. I mean, artificial intelligence, right? That's all, I mean, that's the that's the topic. Um, has gone from you know night into day, 
um, in the in the last six months. Like truly, it's it is a sea change, um, the likes of which will you know I've never seen in my lifetime. It's been promised to us in science fiction books and movies for fifty years, but you know we are absolutely living at a moment that we will that future generations will study. Not just I'm not talking like not you know online marketing. This, I mean, this is a, a really important moment in kind of human history um, where AI becomes a part of daily life and it's going to change the world. I mean, if we thought that mobile changed the world, if we thought that the internet itself changed the world, I think that AI is going to change it more profoundly and faster, faster than these other, you know, absolute, you know, game changers. So um, November 30th, 2022 is when uh, ChatGPT uh, was released, you know, to the public. And, you know, as a huge nerd, um, I, I tried it kind of, you know, within, I don't know, 12 or 18 hours of, of it coming out. And it was, it was obvious to me, just like it's obvious to anyone who's used it, that this is the real deal. Like this is, this is different. You know, this, this isn't like, you know, this isn't your dad's AI. This is like, this is like <laughs> real deal artificial intelligence. And we've never had access to a tool like this before. And for me, I knew within 30 minutes that we had to adapt. Like we, our product, what like on, the, on, the world, the world of online marketing is going to change and we needed to lead it or, or get left left behind so you know we we bet the company absolutely um on our on on integrating artificial intelligence um and i mean so far that's proved to be a a really really good idea but uh look it's you know i i can't overstate my personal belief of in in what ai is going to do mainly for good but yes of course there's potential for you know for some for some harm and you know in the hands of bad actors, but I think this can be a really, really positive thing for 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 humanity, truly. And we're living through it. Yeah, and, and so, and we may we'll continue this beyond the the, the next break. But what talk about like what is because there is there's a there's a lot of noise on both sides. There's a lot of fear mongering. There's a lot of you, there there's just so much being talked about out there, and I think there's a lot of noise. What do you like? What is the the positive view from your perspective of the impact, like at a at a humanity level, like in a in a grander scope than just marketing? Like, what do you see that is the re, the cause for that optimism for you? Yeah, like, look, every time there's a a new um, major technological shift, there's always the doomed the 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 you know, the doomsday prophesizers. There's always the people who, who think that, you know, half of our jobs are going to be lost. I mean, if you look at any major, you know, tech advancement in history, that argument's been there. And that argument has always been wrong every single time, right? We are nothing if not innovative and adaptive. So I believe this will open up new fields, new opportunities. I believe that it will make us more productive, which will, you know, which will, and, and there's a great article by Mark Andreessen on this, um, if, if, you're, if you're so inclined, you know, where, where he argues also that, you know, the, the more productive we are, right, wages go up, standard of living goes up worldwide. Um, you know, what it can do for education. I mean, ima like imagine every, every child in the world for virtually no cost can have an infinitely patient, infinitely, you know, um, understanding and brilliant tutor at their disposal anytime to teach them in exactly the way that they're meant to learn. Like if that doesn't make you hopeful, I don't know what does. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And, you know, without a doubt, there, there are certainly big considerations about how we use this the right way and and what are the safeguards that get put around it but there's a lot of cause for optimism as well so we're going to pick back up on that conversation and talk about how this applies in the marketplace of of ideas for networkers and entrepreneurs so we'll be back right after this all right quick little 30 second reset joe thompson uh, collection ai incredible guy changing the world of, of debt collection in the, in the AI space and doing some really cool stuff. Super excited about that. 
And uh, man, we got some awesome people here. Michael Bray's in the house. Curtis Brooms in the house. Brian McMullen, love you, man. Good to good to see you pop up here. So this is super fun. All right, we're coming back. Thomas Vela. Woo! And we're back. Welcome back to the Legacy Leadership Show with Adrian Chanel and Tom Chanel, along with Justin Bellababa from NowSite. If you want to learn more about what NowSite is doing to help network marketers and entrepreneurs to grow their business, uh, if you head over to contactmapping.com slash now, we, uh, we've got a little spot there that you can submit some info and uh, we'll reach out to you and share more. So just want to make sure I didn't forget to, to put that in there so that those of you who want to learn more can. And so before the break, we were just talking about in a more general sense, at a more human, you know, like human beings level, what is the promise of AI? But there's both promise and, and there's, you know, challenges. We're still, this is a brand new not not a brand new technology, but a huge shift in what is suddenly possible. And the whole world is out there kind of figuring out what does this mean? What is like what are the right use cases? And Justin and I have had some some really cool private conversations about this that I, I think are really interesting. And so I, I think it'd be cool just to to bring some of this out into the public conversation of, you know, I think there's a a, a lot happening out there that is maybe either missing the point entirely about how AI can be used in business or at, at the very least significantly kind of underestimating the power of what is suddenly now possible. And so Justin, what do you see in kind of the, the public discourse about AI as it relates to business applications and especially sales and marketing applications where maybe you think that the conversation is kind of missing the point? You know, I think that where I think where people are getting it wrong is when the focus is on quantity over quality. Mm -hmm. Like I, would, I mean, I, and that's a very broad generalization, right? But to me, that's that's what I observe as the kind of the broad misapplication of of AI, especially in you know, in you know, like what's near and dear to my heart, which is online marketing. So when I, when I hear folks talking about how um, this is going to allow them to produce so much more content and, and, you know, get their message out to, to more people, like to me, that, that feels wrong and that, that not, not wrong, like not immoral, but just incorrect. Like it's, it's, it's really, it's not, in my opinion, where AI can, that's not really the true promise of it. Like, yes, we, yes, productivity, but that doesn't mean just quantity and, and, and spam and, and putting out, you know, mediocre posts like that to me, that's, that's, that's where, you know, people are missing the point. And, and frankly, a lot of this has to do with not understanding how good this is, right? Like, Someone who has no idea what they're doing and goes and makes a free account on ChatGPT, you know, um, chat.openai.com, ChatGPT, and says, write me a post about basketball, right? Garbage in, garbage out. You're going to, if you say, write me a post about basketball, you're going to get a very, very mediocre output, Right. Not because the AI is not capable of more, but because you're asking so little of it and it's forced to guess. So it's going to come out with some kind of banal, uninteresting post that, that you, you know, that you'll share and someone else will say, well, that's kind of boring. You're not going to get engagement. And so maybe you just, you know, think, well, I'll throw more against the wall and, and hopefully something will stick. And that is that's not the right way to think about this. Right. Like when you understand how powerful this is, what you, what you come to appreciate is it's not about quantity. It is about unbelievable quality. Like the things that you can now do with AI that you couldn't do as a mere human, the quality of what you can produce and the ability to, to personalize your marketing and personalize your messaging. Like to me, that's, to me, that's, that, that's a much more interesting application. Right. So if, we, if, you know, the more people can kind of get out of, you know, just, just hacking away at, you know, on chat GPT and making 
low quality stuff, the more that they can, you know, understand that this actually is about, you know, high quality content that's going to help your customer, help your business. That, that's just good for everybody. That that's the real opportunity with AI, with AI. Absolutely. And, you know, I think this this kind of cuts to some of the heart of of why I came to, to be so excited about what we're looking what we're working on together. And I think it's a really important piece of the topic, which is, you know, in addition to just the fact that, you know, your example of like, write me a post about back basketball, like you're just going to get sort of boilerplate junk back. I think there's also the, there's an art and a science to how do we use the power of AI to like augment our humanity and augment our intelligence and have us be able to be be more and be like a, a more present and and like out there version of ourselves as opposed to sort of hiding behind this tool and starting to sound you know everything's just going to sound the same and and yeah. you know and everybody's just like hurling like the same junk out into the the internet or into social media or whatever and so do you like how do we how can we move towards a a vision for the utilization of ai that allows us to like step more fully into our humanity as as communicators and marketers i think that i think that's that's our job as you know as innovators in in the tech world right like that that's that's i think that's us fulfilling our role yeah. right is to is to say okay well you know how do we take this unprecedentedly powerful technology, the likes of which we have never seen. And how do we harness that technology and make, make it accessible in a way that allows the average person to achieve that level of quality and whatever it is that they might be doing, right? right? That's our job. It's not, it's not, I don't think it's up to, you know, the, 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 just the typical person out there to figure out how to harness it themselves. Right. But but for just I mean, for us at NowSite, we're thinking about, OK, well, how can we take this, you know, this incredibly powerful engine and turn that into high quality marketing in a in, in a totally turnkey way for our customers? Right. Like, can you know, and, and a lot of that is um, eliminating what I would consider the grunt work. Right. To your point, you know. I think we, you know, the best, the best is when the human is partnering with the AI and you, and the, you get the AI to do kind of all of the basic stuff, right? So that you can then apply your own, you know, humanity in your scare, scarce amount of time. So instead of building a website from scratch, well, the AI is going to get you started, right? So that you can spend, if you only have an hour, you can spend it you know, focused on quality, on your your voice, picking the absolute perfect image, right? Like those tweaks that that take something from an A to an A plus, right? There you go. And I think to your point, you know, one of the, uh, there's an analogy. Our, my friend Joe Stradinger gave me this analogy years ago, um, and and he was a, another really forward thinker in the AI space. You know, before a lot of these things came along, and he talked about this idea of the Hallmark card company. And so if you look at if you look at the very early history of the Hallmark card company, it was a very successful company almost immediately. And it was actually a boon to the United States Postal Service and the amount of mail being sent. And the reason why is that people knew like they knew their hearts that like I, I knew the kind of message that I like how I felt towards Justin or towards my dad or to whomever. What I didn't what I struggled with is like putting together the words to express that feeling in a way yes. that sounded like me. And so yes. Hallmark solution to that was to present to you like, Hey, here's this list of cards and you can go and scroll through the thing and find something that says what you wish you could have said, but you would have struggled to write yourself. And so that. AI is doing the same thing for us in like incredible, some truly mind blowing ways sometimes yeah. where, you know, Donna, who's on here, she was talking about you know, her son, one of her sons is a firefighter, one of her children's a firefighter. And she put out like, she was like, write a post about this thing that my son had done in relation to firefighting. And it wrote this beautiful post that talked about her son and all this stuff. And it was like, 
it was in her voice. It sounded like something that she would say. And, you know, Don is a very good writer, but many of us aren't right. And so many of us like, maybe I could get to that, but I'd spend 20 or 30 minutes composing this message. And instead I can prompt this AI to help me to do something. And then I can look at it and I can say, that doesn't sound like me. I'm not going to post it. Or in fact, wow, that sounds exactly like me. And, and this saved me so much time. Exactly. And I think that's a huge thing is that we're enabling people in lots of arenas, including the arenas of growing their business to suddenly be able to post something that is, as good or better than what they could have done themselves and literally in like a tiny fraction of the time. Right. Absolutely true. I, you know, we think of it as a, when I use, I use, the, you know, I use this every single day. I use the AI every single day and I think of it more as a partner, right. A collaborative partner where I'm like, Hey, you know, give me five more, um, you know, words for this or suggest, you know, uh, five, five headlines for this email campaign that we're doing. And you'll come back and I'll say, oh, I kind of like this one. Give me give me a couple more variations on that and make it shorter and do this and do this. And, do, and then before long, there's this it's a it's a an, a an effort of both human and AI in collaborative partnership that gets you to a better outcome faster, but a better, higher quality outcome than you could have done on your own. That's that. That's exactly right. And, you know, I think secondly, I just want to spend a, a little bit more time on this, right, is that one of the things that you're doing that, it, again, really resonated for me when we first started talking is that, of course, you know, there's there's people out there that are, you know, that are nerds that are, you know, that love this kind of stuff and they want to go and, and play with the latest and greatest and all this kind of stuff. But there's a huge swath of people that like they're more interested in the talking to people or in the growing of their business or the whatever it is. And, and the, like this technology is just in service of that. And so you think about like, you know, when a, a in, when a car became a thing, right? Like there are certain people that really wanted to learn how to work on a car and all that kind of stuff. I could not be less interested in that. I just need something that's going to get me to where I need to go. And I don't need, I don't need or want some, to have to be the master of the tools other than like, I need to know how to operate it, but I don't need to know like the underneath mechanics of it. And yep. so a big part of what you see out there is that vision of creating something that allows the average person to see enough of how the inner workings of it are that it's not just this black box and they don't have any idea how it's working. And yet it's room. It's like taking away enough of the complexities that it's easy. Well, and so that's, that's really what it's about. And I, I just realized I set you up going into a break. So I'm going to take us to a break, but let's pick that. That's, that's okay. a key piece to pick up on the other side. So on the break, go to contactmapping.com slash now would love to share some more information about what now sites doing and how contact mapping is going to be integrating into that in the near future. And so stick around your, we'll be back right after this. All right. Tom, are you going to say anything on this show? I'm working my tail off over here. What would I have? What could I possibly say with you guys? <laughs> I mean, I'll look like an idiot no matter what comes out of my. Hi, Jordan Adler. Hello, Armand. It's good to see you guys. That's what I'm going to say. The people. All right. Hello, Tracy. We Thank love you. it. You're great at that. <laughs> All right, we're coming back in five mm -hmm. seconds for the final segment. And man, this has been a great conversation already. All right. And we're back. Final segment of the Legacy Leadership Show. This show has already absolutely flown by. We're talking to Justin Bellababa, founder and CEO of NowSight. And we're having an amazing conversation about AI and what it means in the world, what it means in the world of business, and how we instead of allowing it to intimidate us or overwhelm us or any of those things, how we can wield this powerful tool in a way that puts it in service and in partnership with us in building a better future for our own little micro part of our world of our business and, and for the world at large. And so before the break, Justin, we were just talking about this idea of like that balance of not having somebody have to know everything yeah. and also giving them enough visibility that they're able to, to actually operate within the tool and not just have it be a black box. And so what do you think is the balance there? Well, you know, I think one of the great ironies um, of the first six months of this 
uh, like true AI revolution that we're right at the beginning of. But you know, I think one of the one of the big ironies for me is that AI will absolutely make technology more accessible, simpler, easier. But the perception is I'm more intimidated than ever, right? And and it's it's interesting. Like I I I, I didn't I didn't foresee that. And, you know, we talked about failure, one of my many, many, many failings. Um, but but that's that's a it's a really interesting per perspective um, that that people have. And I totally get it. But here's the truth. The truth is that it will make all technology simpler. Simpler, right? Like for you know, for us, it is it is like our goal has always been to provide the easiest marketing system ever, right? And we are able to deliver on that premise at a level that we, on that promise rather, at a level that we never could have, have done before. Before AI, we were, how simple can we make this tool, this do-it-yourself, you know, website builder, or do-it-yourself email builder, do-it-yourself social post builder. Now, one click and anyone, even if they can't log into their Gmail account, which is you know a lot a lot of our customers, um, they can have a website like a professional drafted website, a professionally drafted email campaign, a professionally drafted social. Place. So it, it, it's 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 going to take some adjustment, right, for us as humans to get to get used to, you know, living alongside AI. But absolutely, it is going to make life easier and simpler, and you know. Yes, I'm a huge nerd. There is no question, okay? But I don't build technology for nerds like me, right? Like I, this is totally focused on, you know, how can we make this as simple and as accessible to our true customer who is intimidated by technology? And we totally get that, right? And the good news is AI makes everything easier if you try it. Yeah. And s making that on-ramp less scary and putting people around it. I, you know, I think that's one of the things that now site does really well. That's one of the things that contact now, like, I, I think that was one of the things where we knew there was this kind of like alignment in the way we think about things is like, one of the great ways to do this is don't like, don't force people to be all on their own. Like, you know, uh, the number one fear I think in anything is like, you're, you're afraid you're going to break it. Right. Like I became, I, I went from being a mediocre chef to a very serviceable chef. As soon as I stopped being scared of really screwing anything up, like almost everything is fixable. Same thing is true with computers. Same thing is true with cars. Same things is true with home improvement, right? Like there, sure. There are a few things you can like really, really screw up, but that's a really short list in almost anything. And one of the ways that I think we overcome those fears is just in community, in being surrounded by a group of people that are on a mission together, that are supporting each other along the way. And I think that we can really help each other. And so I think that that's an important piece. And that's one of the things that I love about NowSite is that you have done that really well. You, you know, Cheryl, who is your VP of marketing, who is like just the most like wow. she's hilarious. She's so, you know, easy to talk to and, and great at answering questions like you do this. And, and so I, I love that you're making that happen and and supporting people in that journey, because I, I just think it's it's really how we help people along the way. Yeah, look, like, I mean, long before AI, right, like way, way back in 2021, um, we had probably our biggest breakthrough as a company when and, and you know, I, I feel like you kind of took my car analogy because I've been saying that one for years. Ah. Right? <laughs> well, we, we, when we really like, look, but it's true when we realized that, you know, for a lot of people, online marketing isn't it's not their idea of a good time. Right. right. Just like, you know, just like, you know, accounting software and that. You know, they want to drive the car, not be the mechanic. Right. That's that's how I use that same analogy. Right. Really, there right? you go. Yeah. Um, love it. It's they want to get from A to B with their business. Right. They want to grow. They want to get more customers. They, they just they want to get to their destination, but they don't want to get under the hood. Right. And for us, we 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 made, we had that realization years ago and we had, you know, still have a great in-house team 
of real people that will just do whatever you want for yeah. like they'll build they'll build your website they'll do they'll, they'll just they'll do it so you shouldn't feel frustrated and then and then ai came along and took that whole thing to another level right and then beyond that outside our kind of head office walls i mean we we have the just the most incredible you know group of affiliates i mean just it's it's so cool it is it is I know corny to say that it that it feels like family, but it really does. All right, like hold it, on it one second. Just, I mean, we have and anyone anyone who you know who comes to to our events, like I mean, and it's a lot like the culture you have a contact mapping, and that's I think that's why this was such a, a perfect fit, right? Is there is this real strong sentiment of we are here to support one another, um, we care about each other, we want to support each other's businesses, and and it's a real pleasure. Absolutely. So, hey, we're going to get out of here. Stick around. If you're watching with us live, we're going to have a little after party. But for those of you listening on the radio, thank you so much for being here. You've been listening to the Legacy Leadership Show on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll see you next week. The, you were you were doing too well. I didn't want to stop you, Great but we had job, to uh, we gotta cut it for the radio real quick. So we're hanging <laughs> out. This is the after party. And this is that, you know, that's the truth. And there's there's so much beauty and so much value and so much growth, I think, that comes from when you put people together that are positive, that are, you know, growth oriented, that want better for themselves and also want better for others. And that's that's what we're seeing inside of these two communities. It's already been so fun watching these communities come together. And I'll tell you, you know, w without reservation, at the more I have gotten into what NowSite is doing, the more excited I have become. And uh, for any of you that would just like to, to get a little bit closer to look at what we're doing, if you go to contactmapping.com slash now, you can submit some information and we'll get you set up with a demo so you can see what Justin is talking about. But I'm so, I, this conversation was brilliant, both because I think you shared some really great insights today, Justin, and even more because I think that people got to feel the heart and like the the vision behind what you're doing that it's not just like hey let's throw as much technology at people as possible yeah. and right. like wish them the best like there's a real care in the way that this thing is being constructed that is set up to have these customers win and it's really fun to to watch it and now to get to be a part of it so thank yeah. you so much for coming hey no thank you and and uh it's 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 look it's been a pleasure working with you guys i mean the the thing, the, you know, the 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 one comment I wish that I I remembered to make during um during the the the, the radio show just now, which I do want to share though, is that, you know, AI is it it is an even bigger win for the little guy than it is for the big guy when it when it comes to online marketing. Like that that that's how I see this. I think I see you know the WalMarts and the you know Mercedes Benz and whatever they have marketing departments, right? They absolutely, they already do a great job, you know, on their website and in their social media and in their, you know, like email communications. They, they do that. They got a billion dollars to spend on marketing, right? Where, and AI is going to help them, no question. But like to the true sole proprietor, one person business who is totally lost, which is about 95% of, you know, sole proprietors, honestly. Like I've been around an, enough now to say that that number is real that are just, just lost and don't know where to start and are totally overwhelmed and don't have a billion dollars or a million or a thousand to spend right on, on marketing. Like this is such a, I mean, it's just such a perfect technology for the little guy. Like it can really help level the playing field. And that's, that's true. Like that's been what we've been talking about for six years. Like how can we kind of, you know, get those big company advantages into the hands of, uh, you know, the small business owner, right? And and this has a huge potential to level that playing field. I love it. And you guys know me. And okay. my AA program is better as a result of this. My spiritual program is better. My relational program is better. And I'm going to be speaking at Higdon's event down in Florida, that faith over fear thing. And I'm going to wrap all this into a bow called how you make this life so much better by being more authentic through AI versus being intimidated by it. 
but you have to step in that water and own it. And the, we've been involved with him now for a, a while because obviously wrapping these two companies together wasn't an overnight deal. And I see myself improving all the time because this does the little things that I suck at really, really well. So I've been able to offload that and be my true authentic self in the way I speak, in the way that I write, in the way that I show up, like I can't believe. And that's every one of us, man. And I'm just telling you, don't run from us. We are your allies here. And we're going to show you how to have this. You own this instead of it own you. And the reason I didn't speak on the show, we're 545 radio stations all over the world. And I wanted people to get the, the depth of Adrian and Justin at a core level, because this is a well thought out process to make everybody's life better. And it didn't need a bunch of dumb jokes and a bunch of color. It needed some facts. And you guys did a beautiful, beautiful job. And I just want to thank you. And all of us are committed to make every one of you happier human beings. That's our number one goal. So thank you guys for letting me say a couple words. <laughs> we love you. You can, this is your, your show, baby. You could say as many words as you want, but this was a great conversation. Thanks again, Justin. Thanks everybody for being here. And if you enjoyed this and, and, know that somebody else in your life would get value, hit that share button or tag somebody in the comments. Uh, this is a conversation that I think is important and, and amidst a lot of noise out there in the world, we need to be thinking about how this huge change that we can't stop called AI can be used for as a force for good in the world. And it absolutely can. So Justin, thanks again. Thanks everybody for being here and we'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.